40 and two generations to save a wretch like us. And Heavenly Father, we are asking you right now to come and be with us, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would touch every individual, touch every heart, touch every mind, Lord God, as we come to worship you, Lord God. This is the day, Father, that you have made. We pray we rejoice and be glad in it. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you will endow us with power from on high that we can be able to stand, Lord God. We thank you for being such an awesome God. We thank you for being such a faithful God, supplying our every needs according to your riches in glory. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will come this day and have your way, Lord God. I pray that you will bless the people this morning, Lord God. Give them the desires of their heart, Lord God. You declare that we have not because we ask not, but we come asking in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we understand that you are more than magnificent, Lord God. You are everything we need you to be. So, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would just have your way this morning, Lord God. We know that all things work together for our good, Lord God. And we know that with you all things are possible to those who believe. So, whatever we are standing in need of, Lord God, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will surprise. Lord God. There's nobody like you, Lord God. There's nobody who has compassion like you, Lord God. You loved us even when we don't love ourselves. So we just want to say thank you, Lord God, for being God all by yourself. We just thank you for our help. We thank you for our strength. We thank you for being in our right mind, Lord God. We just thank you for your son, Jesus, Heavenly Father, who loved us in spite of. Now come, Lord God, and be a part of this worship experience. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that what we do this day will be aroma, will be pleasing in your sight. Have your way, Lord God. In a way you bless us on this day, we will be satisfied. But even if you don't bless us another day, Lord God, we still going to be satisfied. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Glory be. Glory be, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was is now and ever Amen 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 While you're standing let us sing together a very familiar hymn Joy to the World
Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Christ. How many of y'all feel the presence of the Lord this morning? How many believe that his love is real? Amen. Amen. With that being said, we want to move on. Excuse me. <clears throat> We're going to have our morning prayer by Deaconess Wick. Hallelujah, that would change our trajectory of how we see you, Lord God, and how we witness, Father, of you and your name in the earth, God. Father, we pray, Lord, that something would be said or done, Lord God, that would touch our hearts, Lord God. Father, we pray for the sick. God, we ask that you touch them, Lord God. We know that you are already present and with them, Lord God. We ask a special touch of healing, Lord God, well. that you would restore their strength, Lord God, and even their joy, Lord God, that they might be able to come back, Lord God, in fellowship with the body of Christ, Lord God. We thank you that you are miraculous, God, and we bless your name, Lord God. May the word go forth with power and clarity, Lord God, and touch our hearts, Lord God, that we might be forever changed, Lord God, as agents of change in the earth. We do ask all these things in the very precious name of Jesus Christ, and amen. amen. <coughs> this time we're going to continue a service uh, with the lighting of the Advent candles. And we want to call on Reverend Woodson and Sister Denise Woodson. Amen. Amen. Lighting the candle of love and followed by them, I will be lighting the Christ candle. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Today, we light the candle of love. L-O-V-E. Well. Love. The fourth candle symbolizes the love that God sent to dwell among us and within us. Its meaning is unexpectedly powerful and has perhaps the most sentimental meaning of all the Advent candles. First John 4, 9 says, this is how God showed his love among us. 
He sent his one and only son into the world that we might have life through him. The Bible states that God sent Jesus into the world as an act of love. Jesus came into the world that desperately needed help because it was in the grips of sin. The Bible also clarifies that Jesus' death and resurrection was the great act of love. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This helps us see that love is sacrificial. This helps us see how sacrificial love really is. Now we're going to sing. Oh, you're going to like it. Certainly we thank Reverend Woodson and Sister Denise for reflecting on the candle of Advent known as love. We're here today to light the Christ candle, the one that's represented in the center. Today, we light the candle of Christ. This candle is called the Christ candle because it represents the life of Christ. It signifies the culmination of the Advent journey and the anticipation of Christ's birth. The color white is for purity because Christ is our sinless, pure Savior. Isaiah 1, 18. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Thank you. <clears throat> the white candle represents the arrival of Jesus Christ who is seen as light of the world and the embodiment of purity and holiness. Jesus Christ is the righteous, immaculate, pure and awesome savior. He is the light that comes into a dark and depraved world. He is often described in the Bible when bright, profoundly, white robes like snow, and shining with the brightest of light. The book of Revelation includes John's visions of the Son of Man. His head and his hairs were like white wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many, many waters. Can we all stand at this time for those of us who was able and let us sing, go tell it on the mountain.
celebration. Amen. 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 Learning about the event, the anticipation and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to now have a selection uh, from our chosen generation choir, along with others. Amen. Amen. Uh, as we sing away in a manger. Many of you all know it started in a manger, amen? Amen. amen. Christ came down through 42 generations. And the Bible said they had no room at the end for baby Jesus. But he's no longer a baby. I ask you, do you have room in your heart for him? on this Christmas Eve morning. Do you, amen? Yes. Amen. We're so grateful uh, for our choir this morning. Uh, we will now have our announcements and welcome by Kayla and Kyrie, amen? Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, the food bank ministry will be closed tomorrow. Evening Bible study is postponed to January 2024. 
Noonday Bible study is Thursday, December 28th. Unity Choir is Saturday, December 30th at 12 o'clock p.m. Uh, the church office is closed Monday, December 25th, of a course for Christmas. Uh, please note that there will not be set. Please note that there will not be stay connected prayer line on Monday, December 25th through Friday, December 29th. Monday, January 1st will resume on Wednesday, January 3rd. If you are interested in getting baptized or want to be knowledgeable about this sacred act, you can sign up for the class. The sign-up sheets are on the back shelf. The date and the time will be announced later. We are asking for everyone to update their contact information if it has changed. This information will be used to update the church directory and distribute the annual uh, contributions for statements. MLBC members, please remember your 114 assessments for adults and $14 assessments for the children for MLBC's 114th anniversary. All ministry officers are asked to submit your 2024 calendar of meetings and plan of meetings and planned activities to ways and means and ministries. No later than 12-24-2023. Uh, <laughs> December 31st, the women's ministry will meet immediately after church, immediately after service to begin formalizing for the Women's Month, May 2024. So yeah, please continue to pray for the sick and shut in. We'll have our welcome by Kyrie Jordan. If there are any visitors, please stand. Well, I'd like to say good morning. Church, thank you for coming out today in the house of the Lord on this wonderful Sunday. We welcome you here. We hope you will return and have a blessed Christmas and happy new year. Good morning, Mount Olive. Good morning. I just have two additional announcements to make this morning. Um, Merry Christmas, and Mount Olive is continuing to be blessed by those uh, in the community and inside Mount Olive. So today, after church in the lower auditorium, there will be some toys and treats uh, for the kids. Um, Trustee Frazier and our wonderful uh, security guard have blessed us with toys and treat bags for our youth or your youth. <laughs> So immediately following service today, you can go down. They will be on the table in the lower auditorium. All other announcements will come from the pulpit. Okay. Amen. 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 I just, Brother George. Yes, real quick, and I do apologize for being out of the way. Uh, just as uh, part of announcements, and I'm hoping that it'll be mentioned as well, first Friday in January, first Friday in January, First Friday in January, prayer night. Let's open the new year. Let's open the year 2024 and prayer night, uh, first Friday, January 5th. January 5th, first Friday, prayer night. Let's stack the house. We can open the year in prayer. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, my brother, for the reminder. Truly, we thank God for our announcements, but I just want to express my love and praise uh, for Reverend Woodson and Sister Woodson and the uh, women's ministry uh, here at Mount Olive Baptist Church. Uh, we know what they did on Friday and Saturday uh, as they went around and had prayer throughout this community and uh, even sung uh, Christmas carols. Uh, I'm so proud uh, as a pastor to say thank you all uh, for what you did. It was noticed uh, by the community. I even heard word uh, that some folks walking around here singing songs uh, <laughs> and praying for people. But I want to thank you all for that idea. And I pray, Mount Olive, that going into next year that we don't make this a once a time uh, event. Uh, I think once a month, we as a church need to get out in this community. Amen. 
and uh, just have a clean up day uh, where we can meet people and introduce ourselves and have prayer as well. So if you are of a ministry uh, here at Mount Olive Baptist Church, I decree and I declare on this day that your ministry set a time during your month. I think it's Christian Education Ministry Month next January, right? So I want the Christian Education Ministry to set a date where we can all come together and go out and pray for this neighborhood. Amen? Uh, amen. Black History Missionary Month, September. Amen. I'm expecting the same thing. Even with Pastor Month and Choir Month, we want to do the same thing. Amen. Twelve times or even more, Lord willing, next year, we want to be out in the streets in this neighborhood because we understood what happened on last week. Uh, a tragic happened in this neighborhood of an 84-year-old man, uh, a loving man. I'm not going to call his name, but he's helped many people uh, in this neighborhood, well known. And uh, fortunate he was shot and killed. <clears throat> so we want to keep his family uh, lifted up in prayer. So uh, we already have an assignment for next year, amen? amen. Uh, we're going to be God's people on the move. How about that, amen? amen. We want to set up in strategic places and we're going to pray. Uh, for this neighborhood and neighborhoods beyond. Uh, also, uh, next Sunday uh, is New Year's Eve, amen? And uh, we will be having morning service at 10 a.m. And the Lord has laid on my heart that we have a watch care night service at 11 p.m., amen? amen? So I pray that you are uh, won't go down to the, the local club, <laughs> amen? I pray that you will find your way to the church that we can just give testimonies how God has been to us, how good he's been, that we can sing songs of Zion and that we can pray the New Year's end as a family. So spread the word uh, next Sunday at 11 p.m. December 31st, Mount Olive will be having a New Year's Eve service. That's okay? Amen. 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 And I pray that you will submit your information for all ministries to submit your information uh, to our Sister Marcia Barnes, uh, to the Ways and Means Ministry, that we can know what's going on uh, for the upcoming year. Uh, with that being said, I, I bless God for all of you. I thank you for all the prayers, all the love you sent to me and my family. <clears throat> we just love you, and we just want to say Merry Christmas to all of you. Amen? Amen. And I pray that you have a wonderful time enjoying family food on tomorrow, uh, even watching the football game on tomorrow, this evening, or whatever God may have for you to do. But always remember that what you do, you are doing it unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. It's giving time. Amen. Amen? It's giving time. I'm going to ask that the trustees will come forward. you have anything you want to say? Okay. As we give back a portion of that which God has blessed us with. Amen. Let us stand. The tithe is given back to God, a portion of that which he has blessed us with. It is the giving of our time, our talents, and our finances. Tithing symbolizes all the ways we have been blessed by God. We lift our hands and stand with glad hearts that we can give and that we desire to give. So let us bring our tithes and offerings unto the Lord as he has prospered us. For the tenth shall be holy unto our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of giving.
Let us stand. Dear Lord, thank you for these offerings that was given to the given to you. We pray that these offerings will be a blessing to your kingdom and your people. We ask that you use them as you see fit, Lord. And bless those that was able to give and those that didn't have just for this moment. Keep yet blessed them financially, mentally, and spiritually. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Christ. And we thank you so much for your giving uh, to the kingdom that we might continue kingdom work here at Mount Olive Baptist Church. And I know God is faithful and he will bless you according to your cheerful giving. At this time, we want to have a sermonic selection by the choir and we'll be back to you with the scripture reading and the word of God. Amen. Amen. It's all right to clap. Amen. To give God praise. What a beautiful night. The night that our Savior came to redeem mankind from sin. Uh, once again, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, 
to uh, Reverend, I mean, Reverend Woodson, amen, and, and they're absent, uh, Reverend uh, Avery and Reverend Etney. Uh, we bless God for the diagonal ministry, the trustees, and we just thank God for all of you uh, taking time out to come uh, to the house of the Lord on this lovely lovely Christmas Eve morning. Amen. Uh, the weather outside is delightful. Amen. And nobody but God. Nobody but God. Amen. But there is a word from the Lord on this day. And uh, we, we won't hold you too long, but long enough. That's all right. Amen. Amen. I know you're anxious. I know you got things you you want to do, uh, even myself, I have a few more things I need to do, but one of them will not be going in anybody's store uh, to shop for any presents. Amen, somebody. Amen. The hectic time of this season, uh, my patience just wear thin, amen, when it comes to going into a store to pick up a gift standing in a line 30 minutes. Amen. My feet already bad. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I can't stand up that long. But if you don't mind, if your feet is good this morning, if you don't mind standing uh, for the reading of God's word. I know I said Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 through 10, but I'm just going to read five verses, okay? And uh, I pray you read the rest when you get home. Uh, amen. Isaiah chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Mm. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked." Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord God, our Savior. And I just want to preach this morning from the thought, introducing Jesus, your Savior. If you have ever been introduced by someone in cringe, you first... You felt firsthand why it's so important to get introductions right. Maybe they got your title wrong, or, or maybe they referred to you as a former roommate. You thought you were real friends. They said you were neighbors when really you were dating. They picked something insignificant to define you by and it woefully stuck with your audience. Accurate or not, introductions can be stubborn and hard to undo. We may rationally understand that people, places, and situations are rich and complex, but our minds intuitively seek to simplify them when we meet someone new. We grab just a few pieces of information and the file details away for later recall. It's the brain's way of looking for shortcuts. Once we found a shortcut, it's hard to train ourselves out of using it. That means that every time you introduce someone, you brand them for others in some way. If that sounds like a lot of pressure, guess what? It is. That's why it's so important to be mindful of how you are introducing others and how they are introducing you as well. 
Introducing people is both an art and a means of ensuring good manners. A good introduction can get people off to a great conversational start and can help ease any discomfort or unease at meeting for the first time. When you introduce people, the most important and trickiest part can be uh, to figure out who should be introduced to whom. Once you have figured that out, you can easily help two people get to know one another, and even to start a great conversation in the process. In case some of you have forgotten who Jesus is or have never met him, during this Christmas Eve morning, I want to introduce or reintroduce you to Jesus, your Savior. It makes no sense to introduce Jesus to you unless you first establish that you need to know Jesus. You ought to agree with me that the world is in a mess. We have got conflict. We got war going on, terrorist attacks, lawlessness, and continuing racial balance everywhere. You have to agree with me that this world is it's in a mess. No community or, or country escapes the wicked behavior of sinful hearts. Peace talks may give us fleeting periods uh, uh, from time of, of sin's grip, but disorder and disturbance soon return. And it's not just global upheaval that makes our lives on this planet a mess. Families are ripped apart by divorce. Neighbors are alienated from one another by petty differences. Co-workers are jealous of each other or prejudices and discriminatory toward each other. Children fight in the schoolyard or in the classroom over seat or certain places they want to sit. When we consider all the disturbances that take place every day, we have to acknowledge that we live in a world that knows very little peace or tranquility. Commotion and confusion, whether mild or major, affects all of us. We are either cause of it or we are affected by it. But one thing is sure, it's the reason we need to know Jesus. Let's be real. We all want peace, love, and tranquility. And in this season of peace on earth, goodwill toward men, we try to focus on the great hope and, and wonderful promises that there will one day be peace all over this world. The Lord promised a day when there will be no more wars or, or conflicts, a day when the human heart will rest in his love, his peace, and his tranquility. That wonderful day is coming when Jesus Christ will return to set up his kingdom on earth. But until then... We need a savior. So let me introduce you to your savior. I didn't have to write his introduction because Isaiah did it for me well over 2,000 years ago. So I'll just break our savior's introductions up into three parts. Amen? For the sake of being hermeneutically correct in my presentation. Number one, he came. Number two, he's qualified. Number three, his work is not completed. So here in our text for this Christmas Eve service, uh, Isaiah records that our Savior is a rod or shoot that comes from the stem or stump of Jesse. The stump represents the line of Jesus and his descendants. Understand that King David was the youngest son of Jesse, and David's royal kingdom reached the summit of righteousness and justice. But there's a reason why Isaiah 
refers to Jesse's lineage as a stump. That's because the towering tree of David's royal power was cut off. No longer did the descendants of Jesse rule on the throne. Their rule and their royal line were cut so much that they only had a stump remained. The, the illustrious family of David lost its glory and became an average, undistinguished family. If my Bible readers want more proof, why don't you check out Amos chapter 9, verse 11, and then consider the poverty of Mary and Joseph and the lowly birth of Jesus born down in a manger. Only, only God Almighty could pull a Savior out of a stump. Only God Almighty can pull you out of your mess as well, only if you get to know him. So Jesus came forth like a shoot out of a dead tree that had been cut down for centuries. He was totally unexpected. Isaiah called him a tender shoot. How else would the prophets describe a baby wrapped in swaddling clothing uh, who, who grew up to be the peace-loving, life-restoring, hope-giving Savior that Jesus is? Uh, who would have thought that the promised Messiah, the Prince of Peace, would come from a royal line of David as a lowly child with humming surroundings from a poor and obscure family? But there he was, a small shoot known as our Savior. Isaiah says that he grew into a strong branch and bore much fruit. Jeremiah prophesied that, that he would be a righteous branch. For in Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 5 it says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in in the earth. This shoot showed up right on time to restore David's kingdom and sit upon David's throne to fulfill all the promises God has made to David to establish God's kingdom on earth. Jesus came and you ought to be joyful that he came. Amen. Why should you be excited? Why should you be happy? Why should you be joyful? Because he came to minister to the lost and give his life a ransom for many to set the people free from the bondage of sin and death. For Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. You ought to be joyous that he came because he came to seek and save the lost whose sin had alienated them from God. Luke 19, chapter 10, for the Son of Man is calm to seek and save that which were lost. You ought to be very glad that he came. Uh, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. For he said in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I come, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You ought to clap your hand and praise God that he came uh, because he came to do the will of God, to die for your sins, to die for my sins. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death, not just for me, but for everybody. For it became him for whom all things, and by whom all things, in bringing many sons, unto glory to make captives of their salvation perfect through suffering. You ought to tell the Lord, thank you, he came because he came to fulfill all prophecy. Isaiah says in his prophecy that Christ would be a branch. Amen. The Hebrew word for branch is nesta, and the word nesta became the name of Nazareth. Christ became known as Jesus of Nazareth, which scripture says was the fulfillment of prophecy because Matthew chapter 2, verse 23, and Jesus came and dwelt in the city all called Nazareth, that he might fulfill which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. He came all right. 
He came without question. He came. You ought to be glad that Christ came, that you might have a right to eternal life. Jesus is the promised one, the descendant of Jesse and David, the awaited Messiah, your Savior and my Savior, prophesied and presented hundreds of years before his very arrival. By the prophet Isaiah 7 and 14, listen if you will, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel. Oh, you know Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. By the prophet of Jeremiah 23 and 5, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. By the prophet Michael, Michael 5, 2, but thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, thou be little among the thousands of Judah, out of thee shall come forth unto me to be the ruler in Israel, who's going forth from of old, from everlasting. By the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion, shout, O daughters of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming, just and have a salvation, lowly, riding upon and donkey and upon a coat of a fold of a donkey. Behold, he has come. Amen. Mount Olive, not only is Jesus here, but he's also qualified. Come on, somebody. He's qualified for the task at hand. Isaiah says that the spirit of the Lord rests upon him. Throughout history, other people have been endowed with God's spirit, including Isaiah. But in every case, Sister Wilson, that person was a mere human being with limited power. But the spirit of God dwells in Jesus with all the fullness of the Godhead. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19 says, For it pleased the Father that in Jesus should all fullness dwell. Hallelujah, somebody. Can I tell you that Jesus is able to fulfill the works of God with the full power of God. In other words, he is God and God is him. Amen. So, so, so here it is. Here it is. Our text declares the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So the branch that comes from the apparently dead stump isn't just barely alive. It is full of life and full of the spirit of the Lord. We see here that the Messiah has seven, which is the number of completion. He has seven aspects of the spirit of the Lord. Number one, the spirit of the Lord is upon the Messiah. Jesus did not have a false spirit or a deceiving spirit, or even the spirit of a man. The spirit of the Lord God of Israel rests upon the Messiah. On one occasion, Jesus rebuked the disciples saying, you do not know what manner of spirit you are. Jesus was of the spirit of the Lord, and he knew he was of the spirit of the Lord. He also had the spirit of wisdom was upon the Messiah. So in other words, Jesus is perfectly wise in all things. Uh, he showed this during his earthly ministry and he's still showing while he's in heaven for his people. Can I tell you that he has the gift of wisdom which means that he's very skillful. He's able to act wisely. He has a practical wisdom that enables him to know what to do. Not only know what to do but that enables him how to do what you don't know what to do. You ain't saying nothing but I'm going to preach it 
shit anyway. He also has the spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding is upon the Messiah. Don't you know Jesus understand all things? Uh, not just understand all things, uh, but he understands all things perfectly. He is perfectly suited to be our sympathetic high priest in heaven. He has the gift of understanding which he can grasp knowledge that leads to understanding and he has the ability to solve all of your problems because he has the spirit of understanding. Not only that but the spirit of counsel is upon the Messiah. Jesus has perfect counsel to give us at all times. So stop going to your neighbor. Stop going to your friend. Take time to go to Jesus, the one who has all the counsel. He has both the wisdom and the understanding to be the best counselor, to be the perfect counselor. He has the gift of counseling, which means he can give you sound advice. Amen. He can deal with the complex of your situation. He can empathize with your suffering. He can teach you how to cope with your own trials. Amen. Because he has the spirit of counseling. Not only that, the spirit of might is upon our Messiah. Jesus has the power to do whatever he desires to do. Many people will help us if they could, but they are powerless to help us. Others may have the power to help us, but they don't really care about us. But Jesus has both the love and the might to help us. He has the gift, the might or power, which means he possesses the strength to act with force and prevail over our enemies. He has the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of knowledge is upon our Messiah. He knows everything. Amen. He's better than Santa Claus. He knows what you're doing all the time, every time. Amen. He knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows your thought. He knows all the facts. And many times we have made decisions that seem strange or wrong to others because they didn't have the knowledge that we have. Jesus has knowledge that we don't have, so it shouldn't be surprised that sometimes his decisions might seem strange or wrong to us. He has the gift of knowledge, which means he has full comprehension of the things of this world and even the world to come. Lastly, he has the spirit of the fear of the Lord. It's upon our Messiah because Jesus willingly kept himself in a place of of submission, respect, and honor to God, his Father. He has the gift of fear, the fear of the Lord. Now, the word fear itself has a reverential awe of God. Jesus shows profound reverence to his Father, and he walks humbly before him. He completely yields to the will of God. And if you are in right standing with the Lord, if you serve him day and night, if you pray day and night, he'll humbly submit himself to you as well. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you that Christ came to be your Savior and he's qualified to be your Savior. But his introduction is not complete unless I also tell you that his work is not yet completed. It's an enormous undertaking that conjoins with us. Listen now. Once you accept him as Savior and Jesus comes and lives within your life and his spirits begin to work through you, he begins to do some amazing things through his spirits. Ah, oh, don't throw no rocks. Amen. Amen. He don't do things like lie through his spirit. Come on, somebody. He don't do things like going out and hanging out, getting all drunk. Amen. With your friend. That's not through the spirit of God. Can I preach up in here? No, that's through your own conceited spirit, amen, when you want to fuss, you want to fight, amen. I tell you what, the spirit of laziness is in a lot of us because we don't even want to get up and come to church on Sunday morning, and that's not the spirit of Christ. He begins to do amazing things through his spirit. 
he bear witness that we are the adopted children of Israel. Romans 8 and 16 says that the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I wonder sometimes. I really do wonder, are we considered the children of God or the children of the devil? His spirit does amazing things. He guides us as we walk day by day. Jesus said in John 16, 13, 8, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He teaches us the word of God, and he teaches us how to walk through life. Jesus said in John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. Oh, this is the one I like. His spirit does some amazing things. His spirit convicts us of sin. Ah. Jesus said in John 16, 7, 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. But Jesus is not just here to work through us individually. He is here as the world ruler, the savior who will establish true righteousness and justice on earth. He is no ordinary judge who sits on the bench and writes imperfect opinion based on flawed and imperfect knowledge. He is no narrow-minded judge who draws his conclusion based upon the statement of witnesses. Excuse me. He is no tactician or mediator to be bribed by your public opinion. Don't you know, haven't you heard, that Jesus has no weakness? He knows no boundaries. He shows no favoritism. Don't you know, haven't you heard, he is marvelous in every way and righteous in every mode of attack. He wears the full armor of God, teaching us that denying ungodly, uh, ungodliness and worldliness, we should live soberly, righteous and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of his second coming when he shall show up as a thief in the night to claim his bride I'm about to sit down I'm almost finished but according to our text the part I didn't read let me paraphrase it right quick he will restore creation itself and bring peace to the earth. The wild will become tame. The lion will lie down with the lamb. Even a child will be able to sit with wild animals. He will erase all fear and danger. I'm paraphrasing the last five. He will alter the very nature of man. No more divisiveness, no more discrimination, no more destruction. His knowledge will fill our hearts. His righteousness will sweep the earth and his full Shekinah glory shall be revealed. He has come. He is qualified. And if you have not accepted him as your savior, his work is not yet complete. As a matter of fact, let me introduce to some and present to others your savior and my savior, Jesus the Christ. He is the omnipotent one, for he has conquered sin. He is the changeless one, 
for he lived holy. He is the victorious one, for he defeated Satan. He is the understanding one, for he touches every heart. Let me introduce you to my Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the gracious one, for he healed the sick. He is the holy one, for he fulfilled every prophecy. He is the perfect one, for he suffered death. He is the crucified one, because he redeemed sinners. He is the supreme one, because he rose from the dead, and he is the rest the one for he established hope for all who trust in him I can go on and on and on and give you an introduction of Jesus Christ his goodness never deceases his compassion never dwindles his assurance never fails his truth never changes his mercy never lacks his glory never diminish his strength never fails his friendship never forsake he said I'll be a friend to the friendless a friend to the motherless. Amen, somebody. His love is never winter. His supply never strength. His power never weakens. His authority never wanes. And his promises. His promises. His promises never fail. Get to know this Jesus. I don't think I can introduce him to you no better than I have done today today but the problem is will you accept him for who he is will you do his will God is going to allow you another day accept him accept his grace his love and do what God has called you to do I think I led, said last Sunday, God is tired of us shacking up with him. Amen. He, he, he's tired of it. He wants our hand, our hand in marriage so that he can help you in times of trouble, in times of need. So once again, let me introduce to you the heavyweight champion of the world and his name is Jesus Jesus on my left side Jesus on my right side Jesus in the back of me Jesus in the front of me Jesus he is the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. Now come on and give him praise. No doubt. We are, we have been blessed by the word of God. I know a lot of us need to go out and finish our transactions, buying whatever we're going to buy. But just remember, just remember, especially for those who like credit cards, that that debt is going to have to be paid. You see, one of the things I think we miss during this season was the fact that there was a transaction made between God and man. And we owe a huge debt. We can't pay it. So what God did for us was to give us a coupon. We have to, but we have to redeem that coupon. You see, this coupon that he's given us was the Savior Jesus Christ. Now, 
this this redemption is turning in this coupon for the salvation is just believing in Jesus. Well. Now I use this illustration because this is the time of year where we're all making transactions. Right. And all of us are looking for a deal. Come on. Well, God has given us the best deal ever. Amen. He has sent Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And understanding, Pastor just was preaching about the promise that he made David. And throughout all of these years, he is still true to his promise. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So God is here now. Thank you, Lord. And you are standing before him now. And God said it's time. You see, if you don't redeem the coupon... Well, the problem with that is, is a separation from God well. forever. But if you redeem the coupon, he promised that you can be with him forever, to have life. Will you all stand? We're going to go before the Lord. Not only are we going to thank him, for what he did, for paying the debt that we owe, that we could not pay. My Lord. But I want to challenge those out there. If there's anyone who has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is the time to do it. God may not give you another opportunity. Uh. He's asking you to accept this gift. I know um, tomorrow is Christmas and people are going to be handing out gifts. And for the most part, I don't think any of us are going to be rejecting those gifts. We're going to be accepting those gifts freely. God is offering you a gift. Don't reject God's gift. Accept God's gift freely. Will there be one today to give their life to Jesus? Come on down. God loves us all, and that's why he sent his son, Jesus. He sent his son and said, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's the transaction that he made on the cross. Will you accept Christ today? Well, maybe you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you're without a church home and you want to be a part of a fellowship that uh, loves God and is seeking to do God's will. Come and join Mount Olive today. God has truly blessed us. I'm going to pray. And during this time of prayer, I want you to think about what Jesus did for you. The debt that he paid. I mean, God doesn't mince words. He said the wages of sin is death. And he said if your name is not written in the book, you will experience the second death. Because it's appointed unto man to die once. And after that, face judgment. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you 
for what you did. Lord, we think about David and the promise you made him and how you sent from this tender shoot, from the stump of David, Lord, you sent this, this baby. Lord, we understand how the son was given when the child was born. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us that we do not deserve. Lord, we thank you for paying this debt. And Lord, we pray that we will be able to share this with others so people can know more about you and get to know you as their Lord and Savior. Jesus. Lord, bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, this is the time where we go off. I know you guys are excited about tomorrow, but keep Christ in your minds and in your heart. So I want to uh, just dismiss us in our benediction. Father God, we thank you for what you've given us. We thank you for allowing Jesus to die on the cross. And Lord, we pray as we go out that we will be able to proclaim Christ even tomorrow as Christmas. May the Lord keep you and guide you, and may his face shine upon you. You're dismissed.